the normal distribution is one type of continuous probability distribution. Since it's a continuous probability distribution, that means that there are an infinite and uncountable number of possible outcomes. So again, what we're saying there is between any two numbers, um, there is another number in between. So between any two measurements, you could find some measurement, some decimal that occurs in between those two values. Because of that, this, this distribution can only be represented as a symmetric unimodal graph or curve. So whenever we talk about a symmetric unimodal distribution, we're talking about the normal distribution. It's centered around the mean. So if we start right at that peak and trace down to our x-axis, this value right at the center is the mean. And then we can measure the distance away from the mean in standard deviations. or by using z-scores, meaning we take a data value and convert it to a measurement that tells us how far in standard deviations away it is from the mean. So we could count up from the mean one standard deviation away, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. We could count below the mean one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, and so on. So standard deviation determines whether our curve is wide and low or narrow and tall. So both of these curves are normal distributions. They're both symmetric and unimodal. But the difference is this curve has a larger spread meaning it has a larger standard deviation. This curve has a smaller spread, meaning it has a smaller standard deviation. So still normal distributions, but we can have slightly different shapes, different widths to the amount of spread, depending on what the standard deviation is. One special case of the normal distribution is called the standard normal distribution. So for a standard normal distribution, anytime we see those words, we automatically assume that the mean of our distribution is zero and that the standard deviation is equal to one. So even if those two pieces of information aren't stated, as soon as we know we have a standard normal distribution, we assume that those are true. And then the empirical rule applies to normal distributions. We've seen this before, but according to the normal distribution, between one standard deviation above and below our mean, we have 68% of all the data values. We have 95% of all of our data values occurring between two standard deviations above and two standard deviations, uh, two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above the mean, and between three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above, we have almost all of our data occurring. So we could also look at these additional regions that aren't indicated specifically. So from 68, per, where we have the 68% of our data, we have this little gap that we add on either side. That extends this out to being 95% of our total data. So if we take 95% and subtract out, so we're looking at this larger region, subtract out the 68% that's one standard deviation away, we get 27%. So that means this region and this region makes up 27% of our total data, 
or if we divided that by 2, we get 13.5%. So this region from one standard deviation above to two standard deviation above, two standard deviations above, is 13.5% of our data. And from one standard deviation below to two standard deviations below, we get 13.5% of our data as well. So we include that because that'll be helpful with one of your homework problems. But again, the general empirical rule is going to apply. Within one standard deviation, 68% of our data. 95% is within two standard deviations. And almost all of our data is within three standard deviations. So we say almost all because this curve continues to extend in both directions infinitely. There's no end point to this curve. So that keeps going. So we have more data values that are four standard deviations away, 12 standard deviations away. But that just becomes very, very few. Very, the frequencies there are very sparse.